Hello and welcome to the Holistic Practitioner Podcast, a podcast where we get to hear from clinicians who are dedicated to guiding their patients back to a sense of health, wellness and vitality. I'm your host Steve Anderson and today I'm joined by Leanne Scott. Leanne is a certified functional nutritional therapy practitioner with the Nutritional Therapies Association. She's also a certified integrative health coach with the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Leanne has also studied with Dr. Tom O'Brien and is a certified gluten practitioner. She also is a certified fit genes practitioner as well as a functional diagnostic nutritionalist and a restorative wellness practitioner. Leanne is the driving force behind bringing the Nutritional Therapies Association training to Australia and I'm really excited to have her on the call today. Leanne, welcome to the call. Thank you so much, Stephen. So it looks like you've got a lot going on in your practice. Yes, I've been very busy for the last couple of years, I have to admit. It sounds like it. So Leanne, how did you get involved with the healthcare profession originally? Well, you know, I've been in the health industry um, for probably about 20 some odd years, mostly in diagnostics. Um, So I've worked in pathology, I've worked in diagnostic imaging, um, and really uh, it was probably about seven years ago, a combination of things happened. My family, pretty much everybody on my mother's side of the family, started to express um, autoimmune conditions. Every single one of them, um, with the exception of myself, uh, and I wasn't adopted. And that probably started to pique my interest and in, in, in got me down the path of wanting to explore and research uh, perhaps what was really going on. The only thing that was really different between myself and them was I, um, you know, for, from a very early age, I knew that I had a number of food sensitivities. I was very sensitive to chemicals and processed foods. And my diet essentially from about my early 20s, I'm 48 now, was quite drastically different from the rest of my families. And um, that was a bit of a challenge growing up, but it really was the only thing that was different. And so it made me wonder, you know, this real, this link that perhaps nutrition had. At the same time, I was working in the health industry and I was really seeing this constant downhill decline of a lot of the clients and patients that I was seeing. Uh, they just never seemed to be improving from, you know, if they were struggling with chronic issues and chronic disease. Uh, no matter, no matter amount of medication seemed to be really improving them. Um, so all of that sent me down this path of wanting to inquire and wanting to research all of this. And I came across a book called Primal Body, Primal Mind, written by a lady by the name of Nora Gagoudis. And that really was pretty profound for me. It really opened up a whole world that I was really not even fully aware of in the conventional health industry. And uh, I was so really touched by her book. I, I wrote her a letter to thank her for her book. And she actually wrote back... And we began corresponding. And in that time of corresponding, she really had said to me, look, you know, you're doing so much research on, you know, for your family. You should really do something with this. And uh, she became a little bit of a mentor for me, and she guided me down my educational pathways that I took. Uh, so I, I looked at a number of the programs that were available here in Australia, and um, I, because I had been living here all that time. Um, But there was really nothing that I found that was as current as the information that I was discovering, you know, as far as the, you know, the contributing factors to chronic disease, the contributing factors to autoimmune. And uh, one of the programs she recommended to me was the Nutritional Therapy Practitioners Program based in the U.S. And so after really finding that there was nothing quite like that particular program, I decided to do that. And so that meant that I did a lot of flying back and forth to do that program. But it was truly the first program that I had come across that really addressed the foundations, the, you know, the functional and physiological understanding of the human body that 
and, and its interactions with nutrition to a level that I found that really, for the first time, gave me a full understanding of what was really happening with people and, and you know, all of us as a population when it came to chronic disease. So that was one of the, you know, really big turning points for me that really changed my pathway from, you know, continuing to work in conventional health to um, becoming a nutritional therapy practitioner, opening my own practice, and then working um, with my clients through that functional approach, um, you know, really addressing that root cause to many people's health concerns. Wow, it's been... uh... Uh, it sounds like a, a very a busy last 10 or so years. What, what was your role in health prior to getting into all this? So you were working in pathology, Leanne. What, what were you actually doing? So I worked um, for a period of time in Canada as a uh, uh, what's called a laboratory technologist. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I came to Australia, I was working uh, in medical imaging. I worked as in radiography. I also worked in ultrasound. And for the last, probably about the last 16 years, I had been managing a uh, ultrasound department. And my, my husband actually to this day continues to um, he is the operations manager for a private medical imaging company. Oh, wow. Mm. And I remember uh, I, I read on, on your website, uh, you've got two children, uh, Sam and Lane. And I remember reading that Sam came to you one day when he was quite young and he said something to the effect of, Mummy, I feel sad all the time and I don't know why. Where, where, did, mm. where was that in this whole continuum of your uh, yeah. d- diving into this whole world. Yeah, absolutely. It was really like this perfect storm of circumstances all came about at the same sort of time. So, um, you know, around the same time period, you know, my my son is now 10 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was about, well, really right from the time that he was born, we suspected there was something perhaps going on with him. He literally didn't sleep for the first two years of his life. He had lots of digestive issues. Mm. And, you know, by the time he was, you know, 15 months, two years old, we started to notice some very concerning aspects. We started to lose eye contact with him. He started to develop very flat effect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, needless to say, I, I had taken him to a number of doctor's Knowing as a mother does, I think, that, you know, something was not particularly quite right, Mm -hmm. Um, but was always met with the answers of, oh, first time mom, he'll grow out of it, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as we, I think, often hear. And it was really about that time when, when he started to lose eye contact with us, and then one day he did come to us, you know, essentially saying that that he really just felt sad all the time. That was enough. That was, it was sort of like, finally, somebody tapped me on the forehead and said, you know, look, I think we can start to put two and two together here. And the only thing that really occurred to me was I had known that I was a child um, with lots of chemical sensitivities, food sensitivities. What what could possibly be the chances that he was the same? Mm -hmm. And so we had him tested, and sure enough, um, he expressed a lot of the very similar sensitivities that I did, and we radically overhauled his diet. And within about two weeks, it was like a whole new kid. Wow, it's amazing. Mm. And, and that was just diet alone. It, there was no protocols yep. or interventions that were needed in that case? No, in that, you know, really that was, that was the beginning point for him. I mean, we've, you know, continued down a health journey with him that's, continued to improve his health over time. Um, what we discovered some time after that was that both myself and my children, we expressed the MTHFR gene deficiencies. Um, my daughter and I are heterozygous, but he's homozygous. And so, you know, we are a little bit behind the eight ball when it comes to detoxification. And that was something that became more and more um, evident to us as, you know, we 
you know, learned more about our health and I learned more about, you know, this absolute integral role that food really plays mm. in our health. Wow, it's incredible. And knowing what you know now, in hindsight, looking back at Sam's health, if you had have followed the conventional path and and not really got to the root of the problem, what do you fear would would be the future for him today? Oh, I I have no doubt that he would be significantly suffering some severe health challenges. You know, transitioning a child's diet never happens overnight. Mm -hmm. It takes a series of trial and error. And because a child that, you know, starts on conventional food, um, you know, the typical foods that are out there and then, you know, needs to be transitioned, it, it takes a little while for that to happen. And so in some of the slips that we've had with Sam in that transition, we, we noticed some drastic, drastic differences to his mood, his personality, his cognitive function, um, his, his overall health. And so I couldn't even imagine what that would have been like mm. had that had been the steady progression of his diet right from day one. And it was Sam that you said was uh, homozygous for the MTHFR? Gene? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he's got considerably mm. more challenges than, than yeah. you and Lane, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. Wow, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Now, with, with your study, I'm, I'm interested. I, I know of both the NTA, the Nutritional Therapy Association, through Nora Gagaudis, actually. I, I, I'm a huge fan of her work, and I think I've listened to every podcast and and bit of information that she's put out there on the on the web I think she's an amazing woman and also with the integrative health nutrition course what would you say the difference are between those two if if you had to say if you were looking at at studying what what would be the differences between those two courses well you know I get asked that question a lot mm -hmm. uh, because I've done both courses I have a lot of um, inquiries that come through to me of people that are wanting, to, you know, undecided as to what course they want to do, and often what I, what I say to them is I ask them what their background is and where they are on their health journey because I think that makes a huge difference as to what direction you take. The first program I did was um, IIN, and IIN really guides you along understanding all the dietary theories that are out there. Uh, they really give you the opportunity to maybe grow personally, you know, address any perhaps issues that you need to address before you can really be a complete and uh, functioning health coach for anybody else. So that was incredibly helpful. But, you know, at the end of the day, what I found was that Understanding dietary templates can be helpful, but we are so bio-individually unique. And often what our clients are presenting with are often complicated issues that without really understanding that underlying physiology and function as well as dysfunction that's going on in the body, and what's contributed to that and how to address that, often um, dietary templates just aren't enough. Mm. You know, it can be a, a starting point, but often we need to go, you know, as you probably are aware, you need to go much deeper with your clients, really understanding those contributing issues that are, that are relating to their health concerns. So I, I often tell people, if, if this is all a brand new realm to you, you're not very familiar with the world of nutrition, you want an excellent starting point, yes, IIN is fantastic for that. But if you've been on your own health journey or you have been working in the health field for some time um, and you're really looking to, at, to understand nutrition at a much deeper level, then really the Nutritional Therapy Association is, is really like the next progressive step mm. for people to take. Mm, looks terrific. And with the NTA training, do you also learn about the functional tests that you would need to, to perform to get to the bottom of some people's issues? 
Well, we are sort of like the foundational program. So our program really teaches our students about function and dysfunction and the foundations of health. And we do utilize some functional testing. Um, we work very closely with the innate immune system because our bodies are really designed to really give us the warning signs about what's going on within the body. None of us have just ever been trained to understand what those warning signs are. So our, we are sort of like the precursor of really, truly giving people that understanding about how the body is working, how it's dysfunctioning. Because honestly, you cannot fully really utilize functional testing well if you don't understand those foundations. Mm. Often, you can utilize functional testing just like any other testing in the sense that you can end up just chasing symptoms as opposed to knowing, you know, how to weave it in to the a client's whole, you know, whole health program. Mm. It it's, reminds me that testing is really just a tool, and so yeah. you, you're either uh, good with the tool or not good with the tool. So oh, for yeah. sure, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, understanding what that tool does and how to use it is really the art. And you're now bringing the NTA course out to Australia. I understand, which is pretty exciting. Yes, well, you know, when I did the program, as I said, I had to fly um, to America three times to do the program. And in the first workshop that I had to do, within the first two hours of doing that program, I knew that we desperately needed this program here in Australia, that there was nothing that was really addressing human function, human nutrition to this level. And one of the part of our program is, is we have... Uh, you know, aside from a number of assignments and exams and the studies that need to be done, one part of the program that's really pretty profound is they ask every student to do what's called a community project, where you essentially take your knowledge and you pay it forward. And within that two-hour moment when our lead instructor, who for me just happened to be the founder of the program, told us about the community project it was a little bit like a light bulb moment for me, and I literally stood up in the middle of the class and said, I already know what my community project is. And he said, what's that? And I said, you're coming to Australia, <laughs> and I'm going to make it happen. And he had this look at, you know, on his face like, okay, sure, whatever you say. Um, but you know, little did he realize three years, three or four years down the track, it was actually going to become a reality. And so we just graduated our first class this past November. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. how many graduates in that class, Leanne? So our first class was a class of 20, mm -hmm. and we try to keep our class numbers a little bit tight to maybe around 30 to 35 students because we really are more than just practitioners. We become educators, and we really need to be able to completely own the content that we're that we're learning and be able to fully explain that to somebody else in terms that they can really understand mm. and as I said part of what we also teach is a what's called a functional evaluation which is really tapping into that innate immune system and so we spend a lot of time with our students giving them those hands-on skills as well so we, our typical instructor team ranges from anywhere between five to 15 instructors to guide our students and give them that quality of time that they need to really own that material. Sounds like a fantastic course. And the, there's a new enrollment coming for the 2016 quite soon, is that right? That's correct. So mm. at the moment, we're in a registration process right now. It opened in October, and we will be... Registration will continue until February 2nd, and the course begins February 22nd. Yeah, and it's quite an intensive course. From I, I looked at the website, and it looks like it covers a lot of information in that one year. It, it is fairly intensive. We take essentially two years, you know, two full-time academic years. We condense it into a one-year academic year online, what we call a hybrid program. So a lot of the content is online, but we also do a number of classes without, within that year. 
that need to be attended. And then we also do um, what's called the class call every two weeks where we get together as a class on a teleconference call to really move through the content together and make sure that everybody's really grasped the material. Mm. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I'm so, so keen to do the NTA course here in Australia, actually. Uh, although this year I'm studying with Chris Kresser, uh, as you know, and so with a busy clinic and various other things going on, I, I sort of mm. a, a bit hesitant to bite off more than I can chew. So <laughs> sounds like you do that fairly well, though, biting off more than you can well, chew. Well, you know, I, passion really can create um, some incredible energy sometimes, can't it? It sure can. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll think about that. Now, clinic, Leanne, what's your clinic look like? Well, our, our clinic is a, um, attached to uh, North Queensland's largest organic uh, store. And we very much did that on purpose. It took me about two years to sweet talk the owner to allow us to establish our practice there because it's all about the food. You know, it's, you, you can change nothing in a vacuum. Um, and so dietary change and, and assisting clients to transition through that change really is truly about, you know, bringing in whole, as organic as possible, uh, nutritious, properly prepared foods. So that was one of the reasons why we brought our practice there. And we've, grown our practice over the last year to we've added on uh, two other practitioners and we really our practice does a number of things we obviously work with clients we also do a number of educational programs through our practice um, because our biggest aspect you know what what really drives us what we're all particularly passionate about is getting this awareness out there that we truly are our own best doctors, that we truly have the secrets to our own best health, if we understand that. And, and really getting people to understand what functional nutrition, functional health is really all about. So we do a number of workshops. We, we're just about to embark on a series of um, what we call the Foundations of Health dinner seminars with the Paleo Cafe franchise throughout oh, wow. Australia. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar, a, uh, a gentleman by the name of Chef Pete Evans. Yeah, sure am. Yeah, I obviously don't know him, but I know I know of Pete and I know he's yeah. connected to Nora Gagauda, so I'm yes. assuming so that's the connection. It is, and he recently also announced his enrollment in our program, um, as well as his business partner, Luke Hines. And so that really sort of, you know, created this really huge level of interest in our program in the ancestral health community. Um, so really wanting to share that information about how we all really need to connect the dots when it comes to our health. Mm. Now, the workshops, what, what format are they in? They're an they're in-person type workshop, are they, Leanne? Yeah, absolutely. So, for example, what we're planning on doing with Paleo Cafe will be a dinner seminar. So we're bringing in fantastic, uh, introducing people to a fantastic array of food and how incredibly easy it is to accomplish this on your own. And then bringing that into you know, that education and awareness about our health and maybe, you know, helping people understand when our, when our bodies are in trouble and what that looks like and what that means mm -hmm. um, and, and really how we can, you know, really empower ourselves when it comes to our health. Yeah, so these workshops at, uh, at the cafes, will they be mm -hmm. where food's cooked and everyone sits down and eats the yeah. meals together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So. We're, you know, hoping to bring that across Australia. So we're doing our first one in February in Townsville. Uh -huh. And then we're hoping to take that across to all the franchises um, with our NTPs, which are our nutritional therapy practitioners that are local to those areas. We'll be also heading up these um, seminars throughout Australia. Oh, there must be one in Canberra, I think. There's a yeah. paleo cafe opened in Canberra. Is that right? Yeah, well, I have a NTP based in Canberra, but I probably will come and uh, assist her with the first one as oh, well. I might get to meet you there then. Yeah. Oh, that'd be exciting. 
Mm. Now, so uh, what's your your typical patient that that comes through your door look like, Leanne? What, what sort of people are you attracting into your practice mostly? Well, you know, isn't it interesting how sometimes, um, you know, the things that you are passionate about become what you work with the most? So I guess probably because of my, I, you know, one of the other things I do here is I write a, a nutritional article for a magazine based in Queensland. And in, in, in that article, you know, the story about why I do what I do has come out a few times. Um, so over over the last couple of years, my practice has sort of shifted and changed. I initially was known as you know, everybody used to come to me with, I think I have food sensitivities and I hear you're the lady that's supposed to help me with that. <laughs> um, and then that really became uh, the go-to person for anybody with autoimmune. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's really become, it's really become almost anything and everything because it really the foundations of health and the dysfunction around those foundations really can express themselves in a myriad of ways. So just purely through word of mouth, um, you know, now, although autoimmune is probably still a large percentage of our practice, we deal with, you know, really anything and everything, hormonal imbalances, issues around detoxification, issues around chronic fatigue. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people will come to us purely because they know something's not right, mm. but they don't know what. And they've been to five to ten other doctors trying to figure out out, and they've basically hit the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been told either that there's nothing else that can be done for them, or maybe that it's perhaps all in their head. Yeah, isn't that a sad, a sad place to be? And I, I, I just feel so many people have this feeling of something's not right, yet all the tests that the doctors do come back within normal ranges and they're told that everything's fine. Yeah, and, and really what our, you know, that understanding about a, what a normal range really is, is so, you know, there's so much in, misinformation around that. So, you know, that's part of, part of the education process that we want people to understand is, you know, really, you need to understand sometimes the tests that you're having done, what they all mean. Because really what's happening, I think, is that we're really starting to put our faith, faith blindly into a system that may not necessarily be serving us as well as it could be. Mm. Things are changing bit by bit, which is exciting. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. So someone comes to you, that um, uh, they'll come to your office What's the, the initial intake like, Leanne? What's your process and how do you, how, what sort of basic tests would you do or is that based on the intake form? How does that all sort of play out? It is. We do have a, a, a number of forms that our clients fill out prior to their first visit. Mm -hmm. So we do a full health history that looks at, you know, obviously their immediate health concerns but also their whole health history um, as well as their family's health history. We also do a quite an extensive uh, symptomology survey of about 320 questions which relate to all of those early warning signs that occur in the body yeah. that many of us really just take for granted. You know, many people will do our, you know, sometimes they call it the final exam because it <laughs> feels like such a major, uh, you know, questionnaire that they're filling out. But often they come to us afterwards and they say, I just thought that's who I was. I have no idea that that actually means that there's something else going on in the body. So those first intake forms are really profoundly important for us because mm -hmm. the clues to people's health all lie in their story. Yeah. Um, and so long before we determine um, how they need to eat, uh, what testing we need to do, we need to listen to that story and, and put together all those clues. Yep, and so then they'll come to you after having filled in the, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the last test. And yeah. uh, how long is the initial consultation for you generally when, when you will see someone face-to-face? -face? Well, we, we like to take you know, all of our appointments with our clients, we allow about an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that first consultation is really to review that information, dig a little bit deeper, 
because I think for many people, this is the first time that they've really had the opportunity to tell their story at this depth. Mm. And sometimes they're not even aware of some of the important clues that might be a part of that story. So we really take that initial first hour to really draw out that information from them. Based on that, then we start to develop a strategy about what investigations, what perhaps lab work we need to do, um, and we start to organize that. Mm around that initial and and so with those health intake forms we're also looking at their diet Um, so we get them to do a food journal for us and so based on some of that information we start to make some gentle changes around that things to ensure that we're stabilizing blood sugar for example things that you know just to ensure that the the initial foundation of health, the platform to sound nutrition can start to be laid while we're doing that investigative process. So within the maybe the second session that we have with them, then we will do what's called a functional evaluation with our clients where we actually tap into that innate immune system of the body. And we do that with evaluating, um, palpating, a number of reflex points on the body that correlate with various organ systems because we know that every organ system is surrounded by what's called a neurovascular as well as a neurolymphatic system. Mm -hmm. And when those organs are in stress, they tend to accumulate and draw nutrients and draw fluid through those networks around those organ systems. So when we palpate those organ systems, we will get a tenderness rating from our clients. And we will utilize that to gather a better idea of where we need to prioritize initial nutrition support to the clients. But something more very interesting about these neurovascular systems and these neurolymphatic systems is that they are um, this direct communication between our brains and our organ systems. So... If we introduce a nutrient to the body that the body desperately needs, and we can do that by placing a nutrient on the tongue, if that client tastes that nutrient, the brain registers it, within about 15 to 20 seconds, we get a response from the body as to whether or not that nutrient is absolutely vital for that organ system. And I'm telling you, everybody thinks it's a little bit, you know, can this possibly be? But when you have a client that initially is registering tens um, through their digestive systems and ten being extremely, exquisitely tender, tens throughout their digestive system, tens throughout their, um, you know, how they're responding with their adrenals, and then you introduce a right nutrient and suddenly all that tenderness drops down to ones, that becomes pretty amazing for a client when they actually can connect with their bodies in that way yeah it, it is very amazing isn't it i know through acupuncture um when i get the correct meridian and the correct point and get them to move the affected area mm. that they'll often look at you as if that's impossible so yeah. I understand, what did you do <laughs> yeah i understand it, especially because it's so far from where the problem actually is so exactly I, I understand exactly where you're coming from so when you say nutrients are these things like um zinc or certain supplements what how does that work so they can be a nutrient that's completely food based they can be a mineral um they can be you know basically we break it down into um our training teaches us a whole pathway of what to to initially try to support the body with so for example if we're if we have a reflex point that's you know quite tender around stomach digestion, we can look at um, supplementing or trying to support the body with, for example, um, hydrochloric acid supplement or apple cider vinegar or um, a digestive enzyme, and just basically testing that against the body and seeing how the body responds to that. Mm. Fascinating. So that's the second that's the second appointment. And have you got the lab results back in at this stage or it depends. Um, some of them will come in. Usually they all sort of come in um, within 
maybe two to three weeks of each other, depending on what, what we've tested and where we've done the testing with. Some of the labs that we use aren't based in Australia. Um, we use, for example, uh, a lab by the name of Great Plains Laboratory that's based in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so basically sometimes it's easier if they don't all come in at once because that can be extremely overwhelming for a client. Mm. Um, so if we can sometimes bring them in in layers and start to work on things gradually for clients, it can sometimes be an easier process for them. Part of what we do that's really important is, and, and you know, before we even begin working with a client, we do a lot of pre-education with that client, uh, even before they make an appointment, because one of the things that's, you know, we've sort of been culturally conditioned to is, um, what's wrong with me? Let's do the test to figure out what's wrong with me. But often, and then what pill are you going to give me to fix me? Mm -hmm. And what they don't real, you know, often sometimes we have to educate them on is that there is no pill to fix you, that the work comes from you within. And it's, it's, we can give you some nutrient support, but a lot of it has to be addressing those that underlying work that needs to be done, which sometimes involves changing habits, changing our lifestyle a little bit, you know, understanding that we need to, for example, digest in a parasympathetic state. Um, we need to be able to rest and digest to make maximum use of our nutrients. And so a really important part of what we do is we really assist our clients in sort of using that coaching aspect to guide them through that transitioning process. It's not always easy. Mm -hmm. And what format is your pre-education in? Is that uh, something that you send to them or is it a video course? How, how have you got that organized? We often will offer a free 15 to 20 minute consultation with our clients by phone mm -hmm. um, when they initially inquire about making an appointment. And so in that time frame, we often talk to them about our services, what they entail, and um, the type of commitment that may be required from our clients. Mm -hmm. um, because often, you know, one of the things I don't, I don't want any client to feel um, that the test is the answer. And certainly, if you take that approach, it's often not a good health investment because you need to do... To make that test worthwhile, for example, you need to be prepared to do all the underlying work and understand why that dysfunction is occurring in the first place. If you have a food sensitivity, that's not the cause. That's mm. just another layer that needs to be you know, figured out and addressed. Why do you have food sensitivities? What's contributing to that? And, and then continue to peel back those layers to bring function back to the body. Mm. Yeah, wow, well, that sounds fantastic. Like a, a, a really good way to to introduce people into your clinic. Do you find that when you explain to people the commitment that it may require that that um, scares some of the people away for, the, for a while? Well, I think early on we did find that, um, you know, it, we used to have clients that were sort of like, well, I think I have a food sensitivity. I just want to know what the foods are. Mm. And nowadays the clients that really come to us, they're quite well researched. They're, they often have already started embarking on this health journey. Many of them have significantly changed their diets already. Um, they may have achieved results, maybe 50 to 60 percent of an improvement over where they started from initially. But they know that there's more that they that they're not figuring out that they need help with to really achieve that optimal health. And so many of the times the clients that come to us, they already know, they've already been learning through social media what functional nutrition is all about, um, that it does take layers and uh, integrative approach to really addressing the body holistically. Um, so we, we're very lucky. We get very committed clients coming to us now. Mm. Yeah, isn't that excellent? Mm. You're attracting people that are already... In that mindset. Pre-educated, yeah. yeah, excellent. Um, now, we'll wrap up shortly because we've been chatting, would you believe, for 45 minutes. <laughs> I could chat with you for ages, Leanne. I find you, your experience uh, quite fascinating. Um, personal things that you do for your own health, what's the, 
What would you say for, for yourself has been the big game changer as far as your own personal health? I think the greatest gift that I, you know, I've discovered in my own health journey and what I want to share and, and educate every client and every person I meet is that ability to really understand the messages that your body is giving you. And really tap into that because that's the key. That is entirely the key. And to understand that health is not a, you know, I accomplish this goal and then I'm done. It's an ongoing journey. Um, we are living in this state of, I believe Chris Presser said it best, you know, we are living in this state of biological mismatch with our environment. Mm. Um, we are constantly being, our health is being challenged constantly by our environment, toxins, stress, our lifestyle. And so we constantly need to be aware of that and, and know what we need to do to course correct from time to time. Um, and I think that's ultimately the greatest skill that we can have um, is to know, how, know when we do need to course correct for whatever life throws at us. Mm. Yeah, fantastic tip. And the last question, um, for someone who wanted to get into the healthcare profession or someone who's um, hasn't got a lot of clinical experience or even someone who's been a clinician for a while and isn't quite where they'd like to be in their practice, what's something, a tip that, that you've got that uh, has led to your success as a, as a clinician? You know, I think if anybody feels that they really want to expand and grow, towards this model of health that we see is going to come to Australia. I, you know, I, my personal little vision is that the Nutritional Therapy Association will really pave the way for the model of functional medicine to come to this country. Um, and, and anybody that wants to embrace and even just dip their toe in the water a little bit, it's about networking. It's, a get, it's about making those connections with the organizations that are already starting to flourish and foster here because it's, I think it's going to be a massive shift that is going to come here in the next year or so. And I know that we're already sort of moving that way. Um, there's a lot of practitioners working in that integrative model, but that functional model I think is, is a slightly more deeper level of understanding. It's where we really start to connect the dots for our clients to a much deeper level. And there is so much information that's spreading like wildfire about this worldwide that all we need to do is just start to tap into it and connect with each other. And that will be the key. Mm, fantastic. Now I have to ask one more question because <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Productiv a productivity tip. You, you seem an amazingly productive person. How do you manage having two kids and a busy practice and also a lot of other things going on behind the scenes with the NTA? Oh, indeed. I'll tell you, I, I think it's about becoming focused about what's important, letting go what doesn't serve you. Yeah. Um, prioritizing your maybe your days, um, your weeks, your months, and none of that happens overnight. Um, I think you know that's something that we all grow into. But I I think when you when you initially first figure out what's important to you and that goal that you want to strive towards, it's about just laying, you know, developing that vision of that path and what it's going to take to get you along that path. Mm, fantastic. Well, thanks very much for your time. You've been very generous today, Leanne. And I hope to catch up with you in Canberra when there's a workshop at the Paleo Cafe in Canberra. And I'm sure we'll be in touch throughout the year as we're both going through Chris Cress's training this year. So it's been Absolutely. a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Stephen, for your time and, and for this wonderful opportunity to chat with you today. Great. Thanks very much, Leanne. Have a great night. Okay, good too. Bye-bye. And that concludes this episode of the Holistic Practitioner Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. If you'd like to get in touch with Leanne Scott, 
you can contact her through the website www.purecorenourishment.com.au. And if you've been inspired to study with the Nutritional Therapies Association and you're in Australia, you can go to the website www.ntaaustralia.com.au and you'll get all the information you need to join that course. Once again, I've been your host, Steve Anderson. I'd like to thank you for taking the time and I look forward to catching you next time. Cheers. Cheers.